Whilst today's pollen can reflect that more than 100 years have elapsed since regaining its independence in 1918, after having been partitioned by Prussia, Russia and Austria for 123 years, throughout the late 18th and 19th century, the Polish nation never lost hope of regaining its independence. It was a time that, following the defeat of Napoleon, that the 1815 Treaty of Vienna assigned a major part of Poland to Russia. This Congress Poland was to be self-governing, but because of the tyranny exercised by the Tsar, an insurrection broke out on the night of the 29th of November 1830 in Warsaw. This Polish-Russian war lasted nearly a year, and despite the gallantry of the Poles on the battlefield, the overwhelming strength of the Russian forces compelled the remains of the Polish army to lay down their arms. Many Poles could not live under the domination of the Tsar and sought refuge in countries such as France and Britain. One such Polish patriot, who was to become an exile in Britain and never see Poland again, was Lieutenant Józef Gomoszynski, who was around 17 years of age when the uprising started. In a book which was published in 1843, Lieutenant Gomoszynski of the 1st Lancers Regiment and a member of the Polish Historical Association of London sketched out a history of Poland. This book is a collection of a course of three lectures which he gave in several cities in England. He refers little to his experiences on the battlefield. However, we do learn from the book that, and I quote, it is now five years since I first landed on your hospitable shores, after having been liberated from a fortress at Weichselmunde near Danzig, Polish Wiswoutsche, where I had been confined some time for having made a daring attempt to return to the land of my birth and after having wandered during the intervening years from 1832 over almost every part of the continent in the vain hope of finding happiness and a home. Compelled after my release from prison by the Prussian government to seek asylum in England, I landed in London, friendless and a stranger to your language, manners, habits and customs. But under all these disadvantages, it was not long before I had an opportunity of discovering that warm-hearted interest and sympathy in the cause of the unfortunate for which your nation has long been so deservedly distinguished. Gomoszynski's arrival in London is noted in a document, Certificate of Arrival, on the 12th July 1836, on board the Lachs, sailing from Danzig on a Prussian passport. In 1832, Thomas Campbell, a noted Scottish poet, as president of the Literary Association of the Friends of Poland, published an address to the people of Great Britain calling for their support for Poland. Campbell, who was born in Glasgow, became a staunch supporter of the Polish cause. The appeal was not in vain. The association was to exist for many years. The first branch of the Literary Association of the Friends of Poland was formed later in Glasgow. In a few weeks, they had more than 200 members. In their address to fellow citizens, it stated, the inhabitants of no nation at the present moment are entitled to so much of the sympathy and hospitality of Britain as the unfortunate patriots of Poland. From 1834, the British government allocated an annual sum to Polish refugees who had emigrated to Britain because of the insurrection in Poland. A return dated March 1842 records that Gomoszynski was granted an allowance of two pounds per lunar month, that is 26 pounds in a full year, Using the Bank of England inflation calculator, that be worth nearly £3,000 in 2019 terms. The first occurrence of a record in Scotland that could be traced was in the old parish registers of Greenock. 
It was his marriage in December 1839 at St. John's Episcopal Church in Greenock to Jane Hughes, the daughter of a Liverpool solicitor. In June 1841, he and his wife, along with her first child, Catherine Stanislava, were now living in Headingley in Leeds. He described himself then as a professor of languages. Another daughter, Emily Jane, was born in the second quarter of 1842 in Leeds. They also were to raise two sons, Joseph and Casimir. Sometime in 1840, when he moved to Leeds, he was the correspondent of the Polish Historical Association in London. In the 1841 census, he described himself as a professor of languages. His book published in 1843 drew on a series of three lectures on the history of Poland, which he publicly gave in Leeds, Liverpool and Bradford. Behind this was his strong desire to provide information to the British public about Poland. Of the British subscribers, among them the notable names were the Right Honourable Lord Dudley Coote Stewart of London, son of the first Marquess of Butte. Lord Stewart held the office of a Member of Parliament. He became Vice President and later President of the Literary Association of the Friends of Poland and was a passionate advocate of Polish independence. A son of Józef Gomaszynski, Joseph Francis Dudley was named after this MP. At some point, Lieutenant Gomaszynski moved to Carlisle and was Master of the Modern Language Department of Stanwyck's Academy at Carlisle in England. From there, he returned to Greenock and to his academy at Boyd Street, where he offered teaching in French and German. On the 27th October 1845, Lieutenant Gomaszynski, aged 32, died at his house. He had been suffering for several months with a terrible heart illness. He was buried on the 1st November at the necropolis in Glasgow. Some of his circle attended the funeral and others on the 12th November in London, including Lord Dudley Stewart, attended a funeral mass for his soul. The Scots, at their own expense, would later erect a monument to him at the necropolis in Glasgow. A distinguished Glasgow monumental sculptor William Mossman was commissioned to make the stone memorial. On the 14th November 1845, Mrs. Gomaszynska placed a notice in the Greenock Advertiser that she was opening classes for the instruction of young ladies in history, composition and French. Sadly, the infant son, Joseph Francis Dudley, died in Greenock in July 1846 nine months after the death of his father in the family home at 4 Boyd Street in Greenock. In 1847, the house, which was in a pleasant situation in the town, was put up for sale. She remained in Greenock, but was later to move to Southport in England, where she ran a school for young ladies. She died in May 1877. Her son, Casimir, became borough surveyor of Tynemouth in northeast England. He served in the Tynemouth Artillery Volunteers and in 1884 was promoted to captain. He died in March 1928 in London. Catherine Stanislava died in 1919 in Middlesex and Emily died age 55 in Droitwich, Worcestershire, England. In a letter from a Glaswegian by the name of James Ferguson in October 1940, the presence of the monument to a Polish officer, which lay near the top of the hill in the Glasgow necropolis, and who had fought for the Polish independence, was brought to the attention of headquarters, Polish camps and units in Scotland. The writer thought that it may be of interest to the Polish patriots now in Scotland to know this. A ceremony at his grave was soon arranged, which included Patrick Dolan, the Lord Provost of Glasgow, and a great friend of Poland, and Colonel Bistram, the Polish officer in charge in Glasgow, 
and other officers, as well as Polish families and Scots. On the monument today to Lieutenant Gomaszynski are the emblems of the Royal Polish Eagle and the pogon of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth are quite clear to see. At its peak in the 17th century, the Commonwealth was a multi-ethnic, multi-faith state containing about 11 million souls, amongst whom were small numbers of Scots. This pogon emblem is, to my knowledge, the only one to be found in a public place in Scotland. Today, this Polish patriot is still remembered.